Corvette history for fun. 1953, humble beginnings. Chevrolet rushes the Corvette into production following the model's debut at GM's 1953 Motorama show. The two-seat Roadster uses fiberglass body panels and relies on Chevy's tried-and-true blue flame inline six for motivation. While the six-cylinder power plant produces 115 horses in Chevy's sedan, the Bowtie brand tunes the engine to make 150 ponies in the Corvette. A two-speed automatic is the only transmission offered, and all of the cars are painted polo white and wear a red interior. Chevrolet produces 300 Corvettes in 1953 and sells just 183 of them. Assign blame to the vehicle, being neither civilized enough to be a true grand tourer nor engaging enough to appeal to the sports car crowd. 1954-1955, Find Me in St. Louis. The first few Corvettes are produced on a small assembly line in Flint, Michigan. However, by the end of 1953, Chevrolet moves production of its sports car to St. Louis, Missouri. The 1954 Corvette adds three new paint colors, black, red, and blue, and trades the previous black top for a tan one. A revised camshaft adds five horses to the six-cylinder engine's stable. Despite these improvements, Chevrolet still struggles to sell the Corvette. While the St. Louis factory is capable of producing 10,000 Corvettes per year, it yields just 3640 units for 1954. 1954-1955, Find Me in St. Louis. New life comes to the Corvette in 1955, when Chevrolet finally shoves its 4.3-liter, 265-cubic-inch V8 under the model's hood in a fit of good sense. The 195-horsepower engine brings with it an available three-speed manual transmission. For the first time, the Corvette offers drivers proper sports car performance. 1956-1957, birth of a legend. Chevrolet fully transforms the Corvette for the 1956 model year. A revised front end is reminiscent of the Mercedes-Benz 300 SL coupes, while scalloped sides add a more distinctive look. The V8 carries over, but includes a new camshaft design that allows it to produce 210 horsepower with the standard Carter four-barrel carburetor. A second carb is available and raises output to 225 horses. New creature comforts include external door handles, windows that roll into the door panel, 1953-1955 Corvettes, had removable window curtains, and an available power-operated folding roof. 1956-1957, birth of a legend. We, still called sports cars illustrated at the time, take an early 1956 Corvette prototype for a spin and find the stick shift 225 horsepower convertible hit 60 miles per hour in 7.5 seconds, a massive improvement over the old six-cylinder car, which took more than 11 seconds to reach the mile a minute mark. Things get even better in 1957 when Chevrolet enlarges the V8's displacement to 4.6 liters, 283 cubic inches, and adds an available fuel injection system to the menu. In its most powerful state, the engine makes an eye-widening 283 horsepower. 1958-1960, four for the road. The Corvette goes under the knife again and emerges sporting a revised front end with a new dual headlight design for 1958. Other changes include an updated interior that sees the tachometer moved from the center of the dashboard to a location in the driver's line of sight, just below the speedometer. Power continues to rise as well, and the most potent Corvette produces a cool 290 horses from its fuel-injected V8. That figure rises to 315 ponies for 1960. 1961-1962, last goodbye. Chevrolet prepares to bid adieu to the first-generation Corvette. A redesigned rear end debuts for 1961 and introduces the sports car's now famous quad taillight design. Chevrolet shovels its new 5.4 liter, 327 cubic inch V8 under the Corvette's hood in 1962, where it makes as much as 360 horsepower in its highest rated state. 1963, Ray of Light. Chevrolet releases an all new Corvette for the 1963 model year. Affectionately known as the Stingray, the second-generation Corvette introduces to the model an independent rear suspension and a coupe body style. The form-fitting body is once again made of fiberglass. A split-window design is unique to the first-year coupes. Chevy's 327 V8 carries over and can be mated to either an automatic transmission or a three- or four-speed manual gearbox. In our test of the then-new Corvette, we chide Chevrolet for offering anything but the four-speed manual in the car. 
1963, Z0-6. Knowing the Corvette will appeal to the racing community, Chevrolet offers the model with a race-ready package dubbed Regular Production Order, RPO, Z06. The package adds a vacuum brake booster, a dual master cylinder, power drum brakes with centered metallic brake linings, larger shock absorbers, and a bigger front anti-roll bar. Limited to Corvettes equipped with the most powerful 360-horsepower variant of the V8 engine, 250 horses are standard, and a four-speed manual transmission, RPO Z06 is applied to just 199 Corvettes in 1963. 1965, bigger is better. Chevrolet responds to critics of the Corvette's drum brakes by equipping the car with standard four-wheel disc brakes for the 1965 model year. Buyers can still opt for drums at a credit of $64.50. The brake improvements are a timely upgrade, as Chevrolet also sees fit to plug its big block V8 engine under the Corvette's hood. The optional engine displaces 6.5 liters, 396 cubic inches, and produces a monstrous 425 gross horsepower, a figure many suspect is underrated. 1966, even, bigger is, still, better. For 1966, Chevrolet increases the engine's bore, subsequently upping displacement to 7.0 liters, 427 cubic inches. The bigger big block belts out a reported 425 horsepower, with power shooting up to 435 horses for 1967. A second 427 V8 is added to the Corvette lineup for 1967 as well. Dubbed 88 Lira. The top of the line bent 8 produces 430 horses on paper. The real number, however, is closer to 560 horsepower. Just 20 buyers check the box for the beefy 88 Lira engine. 1968-1971, Shirk Nato. After five model years, the C2 Corvette is replaced for 1968 by the C3. The new car crib styling details from designer Larry Shinoda's Mako Shark 2 concept car. The coupe no longer offers a formal rear storage area. However, the body style now includes removable roof panels. Despite the new shape, the third-generation Corvette's underpinnings are nearly identical to its predecessors. Powertrains are largely carryover, although a new three-speed automatic transmission replaces the prior two-speed unit. 1968-1971, Shirk Nato. Chevrolet reinstates the Stingray name in 1969 now as one word, and enlarges the stroke of the standard V8, which brings displacement up to 5.7 liters, 350 cubic inches. A new V8, also displacing 5.7 liters, finds its way under the Corvette's hood in 1970. The engine produces 370 horsepower, 70 more than the base power plant. Chevrolet also strokes the heavier big block V8 to 7.4 liters from 7.0 liters, that 454 cubic inch engine makes 390 horses and is dubbed LS5. 1968-1971, Shirk Nato. Power begins to fall in 1971, as octane requirements are reduced in preparation for the upcoming move to unleaded fuel. A new 425 horsepower big block V8 is introduced under the LS6 banner. We test four different powertrain variants of the sports car and find the entry-level 270 horsepower model with a three-speed automatic scoots to 60 miles per hour in a reasonable enough 7.1 seconds. Meanwhile, the top dog LS6 requires just 5.3 seconds to do the same deed. 1973-1976, new bumper, who dis, to meet federal safety standards, the 1973 Corvette sports a new mug with a body color urethane bumper cover. The cover adds 35 pounds to the car's weight and is able to withstand impacts of up to 5 miles per hour without causing damage to the lights or safety features. Power continues to fall, and the entry-level 1973 Corvette spits out just 190 horsepower. Opting for the most powerful big block engine brings just 275 horses to the stable. Chevy adds a body color rear bumper to the